Archbishop Augustine Kasuja, the papal nuncio to Nigeria, counts himself a very lucky man. He was a young man when Uganda went down the books of history as the first African country to host a pope. Italy for its three million Roman Catholics. The arrival of the Pope by V. Uganda hosted Pope Paul VI in 1969. At the time, the youthful Kasuja, who was later to become Archbishop, was one of the Ugandan students at the Urbaniana Seminary in Rome, Italy. First visit of the Pope to African, the African continent, it gave us a lot of enthusiasm. Mm. Everybody was thinking about it. Mm. Why does he go now to Africa? Mm. And why does he, does he go particularly to Uganda? I remember uh, some of my colleagues made official steps to ask if we could make part of the delegation to come from Rome, but there was a negative response. <laughs> Although Kasuja and fellow seminarians from Uganda did not get the coveted opportunity to travel with the Pope to Uganda, they were somewhat involved in the preparations to ensure that the Pope makes a successful trip to their country. We received some questions. Uh, if there were some students from Uganda who know some of the languages of Uganda, <laughs> Uganda especially, they say, just so that the Holy Father could have, say, a phrase one or two in the local language. For instance, Mueva Renyo, thank you very much. Mueva. This contribution may seem marginal, but it meant a lot to the cleric and his colleagues. It made us enter into the discourses of the Pope, even before he gave them, but we never knew, not everything, but just to see that phrase. We said, ah, he's going to say that phrase. <laughs> just to, it, makes, it made us even feel part of, of the journey, even though we were not on the spot. Okay. In Rome, the preparations for Pope Paul VI's visit to Uganda were overseen by a commission headed by Archbishop Paul Machinkos and in Uganda by commissions formed by both the church and the state. Pope Paul VI visited Uganda to pay tribute to the 22 Uganda martyrs who he had canonized in 1964. In a country where Africans had received the faith in Jesus Christ and had really, were so courageous enough to die for their faith. But one word went out and it remained a key word and is quoted in many other countries of Africa and even outside. That he said, Africans must become missionaries to themselves and not only wait for others to become missionaries. He was also here to attend the symposium of African bishops that was sitting in Uganda. More than 50 years later, Uganda is preparing yet again to receive another pontiff, the third such visit by a pope since 1969. Pope Francis is expected in Uganda from 27th to 29th November. After Pope Paul VI in 1969, Pope John Paul II also visited in 1993. The Pope's visit is both a pastoral and state visit. Archbishop Kasuja, who has been in the diplomatic service of the State of Vatican as the Pope's representative in several countries for years now, urges the faithful to focus on spiritual preparations. Prepare the population to receive a message of a universal pastor, <laughs> a pastor of the church. He is not a politician, but he is a man of God, a, 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 a spiritual man. Like the two popes before him, Pope Francis also comes to pay homage to the Uganda matters as we celebrate 50 years of their canonization. So he comes to pray to our saints to intercede for the rest of the world mm -hmm. and, and for us to... It will also be Pope Francis's first visit to Africa. He will first land in Kenya a day before flying to Uganda on the evening of the 27th November. After Uganda, he is expected to head to the Central African Republic. For the first time, he is visiting Africa. <laughs> the message he is going to give here will affect Uganda, and Uganda should be the first to receive that message. And give it to the rest of Africa. This much anticipated visit is also expected to be different from the previous papal visits. I believe more people will come to meet the Pope mm. than they used to come before. He is a Pope who has cho chosen the name Francis. Why? Because St. Uh, Francis, a poor man, mm -hmm. and he wanted to love the poor. 
this Pope also wants the poor, <laughs> loves the poor. And not only loving them, he wants that the word authorities, everyone who is in a position of authority, can participate to fight poverty. Gertrude Tumusime with Kwari, NCV.